I want to welcome everyone today to our segment of uh, live Bible study questions and answers. Um, this is actually, uh, we, uh, in the past, we've just focused on the questions that didn't get answered from the Tuesday night live Bible study, but we're beginning now to uh, talk, uh, begin to share and deal with some of the questions from each of the live Bible studies that happen daily. And of course, you know the, the schedule, those of you who've been, who've been uh, part of live Bible studies, and they've been great, haven't they? Um, but it's mon Monday and and Mondays and Fridays at 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, and Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, and then Wednesday morning um, at uh, at seven uh, is it seven or eight? <laughs> anyway, uh, it's early in the morning, so you can you can go online and 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 get that. So. Um, my name is Greg Moore, and I'm the executive director of Army, which is the Association of Related Ministries International. I'm also a staff instructor at Karis Bible College. Uh, teach about 16 courses, and uh, over, I oversee the ministry school in our third year program. So, uh, hey, I want to encourage you uh, to come out to uh, Healing Is Here next week. Uh, man, it's going to be awesome. Uh, uh, we, we've got we've got great a uh, great lineup and and the presence of God's going to be here and of course healing is here and you if you you know someone who needs healing uh, get them to bring bring them with you and we'll see signs and wonders we'll see I mean I, we've seen people get out of wheelchairs we've seen people instantaneously healed of cancer we've uh, seen a baby raised from the dead we've uh, seen uh, all kinds of uh, supernatural things happen. So, you know, if you want to see the Book of Acts, uh, come to our Healing Is Here conference. And uh, I'm actually speaking on uh, Tuesday night, so uh, on on August 10th. So it's the 10th through the 13th. Uh, we also have that will also be available online. So just check that out. Just go to awmi.net/events uh, and you can check that out. Well. Uh, before I get into the questions today, I want to tell you funny. This is called Adam and Eve. A little girl asked her mother, how did the human race appear, Mama? The mother answered, well, God made Adam and Eve, and they had children, and so was all, all mankind made. Two days later, the little girl asked her father the same question. The father answered, many years ago there were monkeys from which the human race evolved. The confused girl returned to her mother and said, Mom, how is it possible? You told me that the human race was created by God, and Dad said they developed from monkeys. The mother answered wisely, well, dear, it's very simple. I told you about my side of the family. And your father told you about his. <laughs> oh, that is funny. That is greatness. So um, we're going to address a number of questions here. Uh, first of all, from the Monday uh, session when I taught on walking in the fear of the Lord, uh, Kathy on YouTube asked this question, how do we really learn to hear from God? Does He speak to everyone differently? Uh, does one have to does one have to learn their own method of hearing from God? Well, Kathy, it's a great question. Uh, each of us certainly has an individual relationship with the Lord and individual and distinct experiences and encounters where the Lord reveals himself to us personally. However, the primary ways that God speaks to us, is through His written Word. 2 Corinthians um, 4 and verse 13 says that, And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed and therefore spoke, and we also believe uh, and therefore speak. He said, we have the same spirit of faith. Well, faith comes by hearing. 
And so he said, look, you, the same spirit of faith means that you're, you're hearing. This is how you hear. It's going to be faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And here he specifically says um, that we have the sa same spirit of faith according to what is written. And so when God speaks to us, He speaks to us primarily through His written Word. Now there are other ways He can speak to us. Um, he can, he, he can uh, give us a vision or a dream or a prophetic word or even an audible voice or uh, you know, cause all the stars to line up a certain way. But uh, primarily it's His written Word and then the inward witness, Romans 8 uh, and verse 16 says, The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if, if God bears witness in our spirit about the most important aspect of our lives, our eternal life, then that's also how He leads us in, in less important things. He, 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 it's that inward witness that you're the, a child of God is also the way He leads us and guides us in our daily walk with the Lord. It's, it's that inward witness and, and that inward witness comes in the form of either a, a strong um, a, a strong desire that He puts on the inside of us or just a real strong inward knowing that this is what I'm supposed to do. And then He gives us Colossians 3.15 that says, the, let the peace of God rule or umpire in your heart. And so the peace of God is the safety net that we have. If, we, if we're praying about something and then, and then we, we feel like that, well, that's what we're supposed to do, you know, God will give us that peace, uh, accompany that peace in our hearts about that decision. And l listen, um, none of us knows the written Word perfectly, but the more you know God's Word, the more you're going to hear God accurately. Um, the more you spend time with someone that you know, the, the more you know their voice, it's distinct. My wife and I have been married now almost 50 years, and uh, she, can, uh, she can speak in a crowd of 10,000, and I would recognize her voice because I've spent time with her. And so um, primarily it, He speaks to us through the through the written Word. And yeah, He can, I know some people are given to visions and dreams. Most of my dreams are pizza dreams. But um, you know, it, and, and thank God for prophetic people who have dreams and, and those kinds of things. But you know, visions and dreams and prophetic words and an audible voice, it, it does not trump God's written Word. And it all has to be checked out by the Word of God. So, um, God has unique experiences and encounters for each of us, but uh, you know, He speaks to us through His Word, through a strong desire in our heart and an inward witness or, a, or just a strong inward knowing that would be an inward witness and that's accompanied by peace. And that's the best way I can describe for you to, to uh, hear God and hear His voice is to, is to follow that inward knowing because your spirit man is part of you that's born again, is joined to the Lord and you can trust that as, as you walk with the Lord and as you grow to know His Word. So uh, spend a little bit more time on that question than normal. So uh, just saying on Facebook, could the concern of what others say stop God's blessings from flowing into your life? Well, yes. Real simply, Proverbs 29.25 says, The fear of man brings a snare, but who, whoever trusts in the Lord will be safe. And so, what does it mean to bring a snare? Well, that's going to that's gonna ensnare you. It's going to stop you. It's, gonna, uh, it's not like God is holding out on us if we are overly concerned with what others say, but it opens the door to the enemy who is a thief, and the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. 
And so, you know, I'm, I don't, like Andrew says a lot, you know, don't let the enemy eat your lunch and pop the bag. Well, what does he mean when he says that? Don't give place to the enemy. And so, the fear of man will give place to the enemy. And if you're more concerned about what others think than what God thinks, and you know, there's a lot, there's a lot of churches today who are bowing at the altar of political correctness, and they're saying, you know, in the name of being inclusive, you know, we'll just, we accept anybody into our church and, you know, it uh, doesn't matter, you know, what your, what your belief system is or whatever. And, and then, you know, they open the door to all kinds of things. Now, God loves everybody, but um, there are standards in His Word uh, for the blessing of God in our lives, and we, I need, we need to go with what God says and choose what He says. I'm going to choose, uh, I've chosen to uh, act on the truth and, and uphold the truth um, no matter who that separates me from or connects me with. It doesn't matter. I'm going to go with the truth. And if, that, if somebody gets upset about that, that's their problem. So uh, Joanne on Facebook, what if you think you've heard from God and then what your leader says in your life is different? Should you submit to your leader first? Well, yes, uh, Joanne, submit to your leader except when they ask you to do something that violates the written Word of God. If God did speak to you and then what your leader asked you to do um, doesn't violate the Word, but it's different than what you felt that God led you to do. Uh, you just need to follow, go ahead and follow your leader and submit to that because God can still work things out for you uh, without you and me helping Him out. Um, you know, through manipulation or pressure or lies and so on to get your way. And that's exactly what happened. Uh, you can read in, in Genesis about Rebecca, um, who God had spoken to when she she birthed twins in uh, and uh, Esau and Jacob, and God spoke to her that the elder uh, Esau would serve the younger Jacob, and then she found out that her husband Isaac was about to uh, lay his hands on Esau and give Esau the blessing. Uh, the blessing typically went to the oldest son. And so she'd been up all night watching I Love Lucy reruns. Uh, not really, but, uh, you know, being, she started thinking about scheming and conniving. And, you know, because God told her that this was going to happen and her husband was about to miss it. So that, that justified in her mind manipulating. And she mani manipulated and lied and schemed and put pressure on Jacob to to uh, feign being uh, being Esau, and then God, then Isaac, uh, you know, Isaac gave the blessing to Jacob. He was blind and he couldn't see well, and uh, you know, and then and then later he uh, uh, Esau comes in, and and he found out he'd been manipulated. He found out he had been deceived, and and then so did so did Isaac and. And uh, Rebecca uh, heard from God that the elder would serve the younger, that Jacob would receive the blessing. But because Isaac was going to miss it, she, she uh, yielded to manipulation. She justified deception. And here's, here's a good point, Joanne, you need, to, you need to remember. Remember this, learn from Rebecca. Uh, the, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10, that the, the examples of the Old Testament are for our, for our and samples are for our, for modeling for us, and we need to learn from it. You need to learn this from Rebecca. Rebecca never saw Jacob again. She never got to know her grandchildren. Uh, she lost favor with her husband, and and her oldest son, uh, respect from her, her oldest son, and she lost out. Uh, manipulation, trying to help God out is not the answer. And, you know, 
the, the bottom line is we can trust the Lord, even if it, do, even if it doesn't look like it's going to work out. You know, you follow your leaders. You, you, you submit to them uh, as long as they're asking you to do something that's in line with the Word. And if God showed you something else in your heart, let Him bring it to pass. Don't you yield to manipulation to try to bring it to pass. That's, that's a great question. Ruthie on chat. Uh, and this, this, came, this came from Andrew's Tuesday night live Bible study, this question, when he was teaching on meditating on God's Word. How should we as believers prepare for our future since freedoms are at stake while also living in the now? I feel many believers swing with either waiting for others to save us and others are, are preparing for doomsday. What's the balance and what, what, uh, do, what do we do? Well, it's a great question, Ruthie. Uh, the bottom line, I think you express the balance really well. On one hand, we need to occupy until He comes. We need to live and treat others and serve like it's going to be a long time before the Lord returns. On the other hand, we need to live like, he, like He's going to return tomorrow. In other words, live with no regrets. Serve people with all, all of your heart. Lift up people, bless people, leave people better off than when you found them. And, uh, you know, I, my wife and I live our lives in the light of eternity. Uh, one of the principal doctrines of Christ is eternal judgment. And that does, that's not a bad thing for the believers. The b believers, the judgment seat of Christ, we're, we're going to be, they're going to be, pa uh, we're going to have re rewards passed out to us. It's not something to be afraid of. And, but I live, we live our lives in the light of eternity. In other words, uh, I'm going to be standing before the Lord one day. And, and so are you. And so, the question is, you know, what are, what are you going to have to offer to Him in terms of good works? Not, not for salvation, but out of obedience that, um, that blesses the Lord. And the bottom line, when I stand before the Lord, I want to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I don't want to hear, well, <laughs> like what did you do with what I've given you? So, um, that's the balance. Live like it's going to be a long time uh, that until He comes, but then also uh, live like it's uh, tomorrow's your last day. And I, I think if you keep those that balance, then then you'll uh, uh, you'll 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 bless other people, and you'll also bless the Lord. Uh, Mandy on chat, I do read my Bible every morning, and I do focus on the Word as much as I can throughout the day. I do have people around me that think I'm a Jesus freak and fanatical, and even though I try not to uh, uh, give heed to their opinions, I still feel self-conscious when I'm constantly in the Word, when I'm around them. Well, how do I get over that? Do I just decide not to care what, other, what others think? Well, um, Mandy, if you really knew how little they did think about you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't worry about what they thought of you. Um, if they can be fanatical about shopping, about uh, their truck, if, about their boyfriend, about their children, about their sports team, about video games, whatever, and what difference does it make if you're a fanatic about Jesus? I mean, if you've got to be a fanatic about something, man, I can't think of a better thing to be a fanatic about than Jesus and His Word and I, I wouldn't worry about it. You know, we don't, none of us has a large number of friends that we surround ourselves with, and, and um, you need to hang out with people that really will challenge you in your walk with God. And if people are, are you're making, they're making fun of you about that, I can tell you one thing, those that are making fun of you and are questioning your commitment to the Lord, when they get in trouble, I can promise you, you're the first one they're going to call. You, know, you, you just watch and see. So, you go ahead and be a fanatic. That's, 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 God, that's, that's God's way of drawing them to the Lord. Victoria on YouTube, 
how do I see by, with faith in my imagination before I see it with my physical eyes? Well, Victoria, there's not a, an absolute way uh, to do this, but spend time meditating on the Word until it produces vision and imagination in your heart. Um, if you spend time, when, when, when you're reading the Word and then the Lord stops you on a verse and you're thinking about another verse and then God just really, you can tell the presence of God is on that verse of, or that passage of Scripture, then, you know, just let His presence come, o come over you and then just begin to see yourself. Just close your eyes and begin to see yourself in that promise or see yourself uh, walking out that or see yourself with the result of what, of what you've been reading. And, you know, worry is, um, is meditating on fear. And medita meditation is just worrying the Word. <laughs> it's just meditating, you know, thinking about instead of meditating on fear and, and what, what would happen if this happens, you know, what, what's going to be the result if my fears come to pass? And you meditating on that and considering that, you know, just consider something different. What, you know, what, what has God put in your heart? What dream or vision or seed of His Word has He planted in your heart? And you begin to think about that. You begin to consider that. You begin to make room for it in your heart. And I'm telling you, um, you, you will see it in your heart, in your imagination, before you'll see it with your physical eyes. And that will actually help to bring it to pass. That's awesome. Paula on Facebook as you meditate on a scripture, uh, do you find the Holy Spirit directs you to additional scriptures to med meditate on? Uh, absolutely, Paula, yes. As, as we meditate or ponder or reflect or consider the application of the Word in our lives, the Holy Spirit will, and I start doing that, the Holy Spirit starts reminding me of other sister or connecting verses. And then I take the time to connect them together in my notes so that I can find them again. And I was just reading some things the other day, you know, about, uh, you know, people who are not born again. And there's several terms that the New Testament speaks about. Uh, the sons of disobedience, the children of wrath, the children of the devil, uh, the unjust and... and um, uh, I think it's in a Acts chapter 24 about the unjust. Uh, there's going to be a resurrection of the just and the unjust. And so I, what I started doing is just comparing all those scriptures because some people are, are teaching on social media today that everybody's already saved. And you don't need, uh, you, don't, you know, all they need to do is just become aware of it. Uh, there's no hell or thin lies like that. Well, if that was true, what are all the New, Tef New Testament references to the children of wrath and sons of disobedience and children of the devil and, and, um, and, and the unjust, you know, if, if everybody was already just? And so I just started connecting all of those verses together in my Bible, and, um, and now, I, now that just helps me in the future when, when somebody gets uh, some goofball idea on Facebook that, that um, everybody's saved automatically. So that's, that's a great question. Malusha on YouTube, if you're a new believer, where in the Word do I start? Well, Malusha, I would start in the New Testament. And specifically I would start in Matthew or John. And, and I like to read, uh, when I'm reading the New Testament, I like to read uh, I don't like to read Matthew and then Mark and Luke and John. I like to read Matthew, you know, one gospel, then I go to the book of Acts. And I finish the book of Acts, I go to Mark, then I'll go to Romans. And then when I finish Romans, I'll go back, I'll go to Luke. And when I finish Luke, I'll go to 1 Corinthians. And then I, then I read John and I go to 2 Corinthians. And then I'm in, then I read the rest of the New Testament and it's all the little, uh, Small, the shorter chapters, and so it just it just works for me 
really well. And so I, I would encourage you to do, to do that. There's another way. I used to do this, read one proverb a day, five psalms in a day, an Old Testament chapter, and a New Testament chapter. And those are all great ways uh, to read the Bible. But the main thing is that you just spend time in the Word. And I'll read, you know, three to five and sometimes ten chapters a day. And, uh, you know, if you just read three chapters, you can do that in, you know, 15, 20 minutes. So um, that's, uh, that's a great way to, but then a lot of times I'm not, I'm, I don't get through one chapter because I'm connecting verses uh, with one another throughout the Word. Uh, Regacho on Facebook, if I'm just listening to audio, the audio Bible, and I missed reading my Bible, is it okay? Absolutely. I give you permission. Just listen to the audio Bible. And, uh, and, 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 and uh, don't worry about whether you read your Bible or listen to it. Just keep the Word of God going in your heart. It's awesome. Karis Bound 21 on chat. Uh, whoever you are, Karis Bound 21, when you get here, <laughs> when you've arrived at your destination, look us up. Look me up. Uh, I know God has called me to go to Karis. I quit my job to head out there in August. When looking for a place to live, is it wrong to be specific in what you want, or should you just go with what's available because housing is hard to find? Well, Karis Bound 21, I agree with you that God, Psalm 121.8, God is blessing, you're going out and you're coming in. And Psalm 138.8, He's perfecting every detail concerning His plan for your life. Well, listen, God will grant you to the desires of your heart, but many times the fulfillment of those desires don't manifest within the self-imposed time frame that we choose. I mean, the will of God, as Andrew's shared with us many times, the will of God comes in steps and stages. You, you can share your heart's desire with the Lord regarding housing and what, you know, how big and, you know, how much the payment would be and all that. But look, if something comes open and, and uh, it, doesn't meet, it doesn't meet every single requirement on your list, as long as it meets your needs uh, and you can afford it, I would take it and then continue to believe God for something better down the line, maybe six months later or a year later, if you're going to come to Karis, you're going to be here two or three years. And so, you know, God will bring it to pass, but, but don't uh, despise the day of small things or the, or the first stage or the first step. Make patience your friend, not your enemy. Hebrews 6.12 says, through faith and patience um, we inherit uh, the promises. So um, let me see if I can, uh, what other questions? I've got one more here. Uh, and this came from uh, Thursday's Bible study um, from Robert Fenske. Uh, Ramon on YouTube, would you say that the heart and soul are the same? I'm trying to understand Mark 12:30. That says, you know, you love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, strength, all that. Um, and love your neighbor as yourself. Well, uh, Ramon, the heart is comprised of the spirit and soul. Your spirit is your in, is the inward man of the heart. First Peter three four, and there there are times in the Word that the heart refers to a combination of the spirit and soul. Sometimes it just refers to the spirit, and sometimes it's just of the soul. And so, your your uh, soul is is your comprised of your mind, will, and emotions, and, but your spirit man is the part of you that's born again, the part that's joined to the Lord. It's the candle of the Lord where He speaks to you, and guides you, and directs you. And so I wouldn't I wouldn't get so analytical about trying to divide these things up because um, only the Word of God, Hebrews four twelve can divide between the soul and the spirit. When you go home to be with Jesus, it's you're, you're gonna, your inward man, your spirit and your soul are going to leave your body and go be with the Lord. And so uh, 
the bottom line is you want your you want your mind renewed so your soul comes in alignment with your spirit uh, but that your spirit's already sealed it's righteous all of these things so that's the purpose of being getting your mind renewed getting your soul getting your will and and your emotions conformed to the word of God well I just trust that uh, these questions have and answers have uh, blessed you and helped you in your walk with the Lord. Thanks for tuning in to the live Bible study Q&A. Uh, join us tonight at 6 p.m. for the next live Bible study uh, here, same time, same, uh, I mean, same station, same, same uh, uh, everything that you've been used to tuning in. God bless you today. I speak of favor and wisdom and health to you in Jesus' name.